Hey, what's going on YouTube and welcome back to Tech Conversations. As always, I'm your host Guillermo and as always, I'm not a financial expert nor licensed professional. If you plan on investing in the stock market, please consult with one first and invest at your own risk. So today we're finally going to be taking a look at credit spreads uh, and more specifically put credit spreads. Uh, there's also call credit spreads and then there's also debit spreads as well. So I'll be making a video covering each one of these topics in detail. Uh, now, if you're new to trading options, there's I have made a couple of videos where I talk about trading options for beginners. I'll put links to those videos in the description below. Please go ahead and check those out before you continue or none of this will make much sense to you. Now, by default, Robinhood actually disables uh, trading options uh, and buying and selling spreads. So in order to enable this, you need to go into your settings and then to the options trading section and then you will be able to enable this. Now keep in mind, depending on what level you are, uh, you might not actually have access to some of these things, okay? So for example, for me, uh, I didn't have access to buying and selling spreads until up, you know, two days ago or so. Uh, and the way you level up, I think, is just by, uh, you know, starting off with the simpler things, so buying calls and puts, and then, you know, selling covered calls, selling cash covered puts. And eventually, once you've had some experience with this in Robinhood, uh, they'll allow you to enable buying and selling spreads. So once you actually can enable it, you'll actually see something down here that will say enable of buying and selling spreads. Just click on that and then you should be uh, all set to go. Uh, now before we begin guys, please keep in mind I invest a lot of my time into making these videos. All I ask in return is that you smash that like button and subscribe. It would really help out my channel and it would really help out people who are trying to find channels like this. Uh, so that they, be, they can become more informed uh, on topics like this uh, before, you know, going into the stock market. And hopefully they don't end up losing money because, you know, they didn't do the research. So thank you guys so much for your support. I really appreciate it. And let's get right into this. So for this demo, uh, I'm going to be using American Airlines stock. Uh, again, this is just me picking something out randomly. It could definitely be, well, you know, be any other stock, but we're going to use American Airlines. So let's go to trade American Airlines options. So again, we're going to be talking specifically about put credit spreads. And so as the name says, uh, we're going to be dealing with puts. Okay. And so the way this is going to work is you're going to sell a put and you're also going to buy a put. And what this is going to do is it's going to minimize uh, your potential risk on how much you could potentially lose uh, if you were to just sell a call. But you'll also see that you're also minimizing uh, your potential reward. Okay. So again, just you know, as a refresher, when you uh, buy a put, you're hoping that the price of the stock goes down. But in contrast, when you sell a put, you're hoping that the price stays around the same, if not goes up. And so you can kind of see how those are like almost the exact opposite of each other. And that's what helps it minimize the risk. And we'll be taking a look at that more closely here. Uh, but I just want you guys to you know keep that in mind. Uh, so... For this demo, we're going to also be using this uh, options uh, profit calculator. It is really useful to visualize what's happening uh, and how this is all going to play out. So I'll put a link to this in the description below, but I would definitely recommend taking a look at it. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to spreads. And again, we're, do we're doing put credit spreads. So we're going to go to put spread. Okay. Uh, and so all you got to do here is you're going to find uh, the stock that you want to you know calculate on and so we're using American Airlines so the symbol for that is AAL and then you click on get price so this goes and it finds the price of American Airlines okay and again so we're going to be buying a put and then we're going to be writing a put uh, or selling a put right so that those two mean the same thing write and sell and then so let's start off by selling the put okay because I know a lot of you are familiar with that so we can go to select option and then you're going to get your options for, uh, you know, what put you want to sell. And so up here you have your expiration dates, right? This is very similar to what you see in Robinhood. And so we'll just leave it at June 19th. And then you have the contracts here, okay? So again, price of American Airlines is $16.74 right now. So when we sell a put, uh, you know, you, you probably usually want to go down, uh, you know, and, and hope that, you know, the price of the stock doesn't go down. But so for this scenario, we'll just use $16 strike price. OK, so we're hoping that the price of American Airlines doesn't fall below 16 uh, on or before June 19th. And in 
return for selling this, uh, we're going to receive $1.12 per share. Now each contract is 100 shares. So if I click on this, we will receive $112, right? And that's what you see right here, $112. Uh, the option is a $16 strike price selling a put uh, that expires on June 19th. So let's take a look at what, you know the, the risk involved here. So we're going to receive $112 regardless of what happens. But let's say that the price of American Airlines drops to $0, right, before the expiration date. What happens? Well, you're forced to buy 100 shares of American Airlines at $16 a share, uh, but the price of American Airlines now is zero. So basically what that means is you lose $1,600, okay? And uh, on Robinhood, you remember that you need to put up that amount of money as collateral when you sell the put. Uh, and so that $1,600 that you end up putting as collateral uh, just disappears, right? So basically you lost $1,600, uh, all just for getting $112, right? And so that's a lot of money to lose for most of us, right? And so, you know, if you might be thinking, well, that's really risky. I would rather uh, my risk not be that high, uh, but still be able to sell puts, right? And get some sort of premium, but again, without potentially losing $1,600. Well, that's where this put credit spread comes into play. So now let's go up here and let's buy a put as well and see how the risk gets reduced, uh, but we'll also see how the total cost gets reduced as well. So we're gonna buy a put, so we'll select the option again. And again, we're gonna choose the, the expiration date of June 19th. And so you wanna choose a strike price that's below uh, this, uh, the, the, the put that you sold strike price. And so we'll use $15, okay? So we're gonna buy a put at a $15 strike price, as you can see, in this scenario, we're going to have to pay $0.74 cents per share. And again, there's 100 shares. So if I click on this, we're going to have to pay $74, okay? So you can start to see here, right? We're, we solely put and we received $112, but we just bought a put and we had to pay $74. So if you subtract $74 from $112, what do you get? You get $38, okay? So what this is saying, so you're going to receive... 38 cents per share, and there's 100 shares, so you're gonna receive $38. So this is what I'm talking about when I say uh, your potential, the potential amount that you could win goes down, because before when you just sold a put, right, you would receive $112. Well, now when you're doing this uh, put credit spread, the most you can gain is $38. But let's take a look at the benefits, the advantage of doing this. So if you actually click this button, calculate, it will actually lay out all the details for you. Uh, and as you can see, right, so this estimated returns. So now you can see here, maximum risk is only $62. That's a lot better than the $1,600 that we could potentially lose before, right? So here you can see that the advantage is that our risk now is a lot less. But the disadvantage is that the amount that we could potentially make, the $38, the max return, is now $38, uh, where if we were to just sell the put, uh, you know, $112 is the most that we could make. Uh, so now let's take a look at the scenarios here, okay? What could happen? Okay, so there's three scenarios. The first scenario is the most ideal scenario for us, and that is that both of these contracts expire worthless, right? And so basically, uh, before this contract expires, we would want the price of American Airlines to stay above $16. If that happens, then we make $38, which is our, ma our maximum profit. And you can actually see that here. Uh, if you go to $16 on the date of expiration, you'll see you'll get that $38. And as you can see, anything above is still $38, right? Because that's the most that we can make. Uh, and over here, right? Anywhere in this green, you're making a profit. And keep in mind, you can exit an options trade at any time before expiration. Uh, so, you know, anywhere in the green here, you could exit and you would still be making a profit, right? And so, again, $16 is the, you know, at expiration date, as long as it's above 16, you're making the most that you could potentially make, which is $38. Now, let's see what happens when the price of the stock falls between uh, the strike price of the call, uh, the, call uh, the put that you sold and the put that you bought. Well, if we take a look on expiration date again, right? So 16, you're making 38. Now, we sold uh, so we sold a $16 put 
but we bought a $15 put. So what happens if it's somewhere in between there, right? Let's say it's 1680, $1580. Well, as you can see now, the max that we're going to make is $18. And if we, as we keep going down, you'll see that that actually keeps going down. So if it's $15.70 on date of expiration, we're only making $8. If it's $15.60, now we're losing $2. If it's $15.50, we're losing $12. That's going to keep going down and down and down until it reaches the $15 strike price on the put that you bought, where you will lose the most amount that you can lose, which again is $62. Okay, so how does that work? Or how does that number come into play? Well, remember, right? If it were to fall to 15 or below, what's going to end up happening is you're going to buy 100 shares of American Airlines at $16 a share, right? So that'd be $1,600 uh, that you're buying with. But uh, if it falls to 15 or below, what's going to automatically happen is Robinhood is going to purchase 100 shares uh, of American Airlines at $15 a share and sell them instantly. So you're going to be paying $1,600 to buy 100 shares, but then you're going to be selling 100 shares at $1,500. And so if, if you subtract $1,500 from $1,600, that's $100 that you're losing, right? But keep in mind, you made a $38 profit from selling the put, uh, from this put credit spread in total. So the max loss would be the $100 you lost minus how much you made from the credit spread, uh, which is $38. So 100 minus 38, that's what gets you to that 62 maximum risk. Okay, so that's how you get to that maximum risk. Uh, and so... Again, the most you're going to lose here is $62. Uh, and, you know, again, as it gets closer to expiration date, uh, you know, it, the price could even keep going down and you'd still make $38, right? So that this is good, right? Because as you can see, there's a lot more green than red, which means uh, the probability of you making some sort of profit uh, is, is a lot higher, right, than you not making a profit. Uh, but again, you know, the profit's only going to be $38. Okay, so let me actually go back to Robinhood now and show you guys how you would, you know, create this exact same uh, credit spread. So we're going to go, uh, so what you can do is you can go to sell put, right? And we had chosen the $16 strike price for June 19th. So you, you click on this plus sign. And then what you do is you go to buy a put and we had chosen the $15. So we're going to do there. Okay, and so this is the exact same thing we saw, right? We're going to get $0.38 cents per share, which ends up being, uh, you know, $38 since there's 100 shares. So you can continue, and we're going to do one. So as you can see, it, it, it labels that as a put credit spread. It understands that it's a put credit spread. Uh, so again, I'm going to receive $38. You could potentially try to, uh, you know, go up and, you know, ask for $40. But again, uh, you know, people usually try to meet us in the middle. Uh, if you try to do 40, you pr your, your order probably won't be filled. Uh, so then you can go to review order. And so then you, you can kind of see uh, what's happening here. Now, keep in mind, the amount of collateral that you're always going to have to put up is going to be uh, the, 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 the put that you're selling, the strike price, minus the put that you're buying strike price. So 16 minus 15 is 1 times 100. Okay, that's how much collateral you're always going to have to put up. So if I had sold a, or if I had bought a put at a $14 strike price, 16 minus 14 would be 2 times 100 would be 200. So then I would have to put up $200 for collateral. Okay, because uh, that's the most you can lose, right? $200 uh, minus the, the, you know, how much credit you're getting for this uh, put credit spread. So keep that in mind, right? You still need to put up collateral. And it's going to be the difference between the strike prices of, uh, you know, the put that you're selling and the put that you're buying multiplied by 100. And so then I would submit this uh, and then I'd have my put credit spread there. OK, so again, uh, the advantage is your risk is a lot lower. Uh, disadvantage, uh, you know, your, the, amount pro the potential profit that you can make is also a lot lower. Uh, so then you kind of have to weigh out the risk to reward ratio. Uh, and, you know, and feel out if this is better for you or not, right? And so, I, you know, I suggest coming into this uh, put spread calculator and just mess around with the prices, you know, try to, you know, 
use a put, uh, buy a put that's a lot lower. Uh, you know, you could do this 11 one and then calculate that. And then you can kind of see, you know, how, how this is going to change, how your maximum risk is going to go up or down, depending on, you know, if the put is farther away, the, the put that you bought is farther or closer away from the put that you're selling, right? The strike price. So definitely worth taking a look at this tool. Very useful, guys. Uh, so that's all I had for today. Uh, let me know what you guys think about this put credit spread. If I said anything that's incorrect, feel free to correct me in the comment section below. That, that, that is definitely uh, bound to happen sometimes. Uh, and again, guys, if you have any questions for me, the best way to get a hold of me is through my Discord. I'll put a link to it in the description below. Uh, me and my friends, we also put we, uh, we post weekly watch lists on there. We talk about day trading, swing trading, trading options. So go ahead and join. If you plan on using Robinhood in the future, uh, feel free to sign up using my referral link, which is also in the description below. If you sign up using my referral link, you will receive one free stock, which is free money in your pocket. So once again, guys, thank you very much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And uh, next video, I'll talk about uh, call uh, credit spreads. Okay, so thank you guys very much. Have a great weekend. I'll see you guys next time.